Mr. Truck here at the Denver Auto Show. And the highlight of the show is the 2016 Nissan Titan. And I'm here with Steve Parrott. And Steve, what is it you do? I do corporate communications for Nissan. So you, you know everything I need to know about this truck. <laughs> This is what all the excitement's about. This Nissan half ton, I guess it's a heavy duty half or it's an in between truck, we don't know. But it's got this 5 liter Cummins V8 diesel in it. This makes the whole segment an exciting place to be. This new Titan is, is going to be a game changer for the industry. Well, this is what we're all thinking about is this Cummins. And that's the 5 liter? What's the 310 horsepower and 555 pound-feet of torque, so it's going to tow over 12,000 pounds. Got a lot of muscle right here under this hood. Well, that's good, and that's what's really cool is you got an integrated brake controller, you got an integrated gooseneck ball, and it's the right, it's done the right way. And this also has the Ison transmission. It does indeed. And that's six-speed now. Yes, uh huh. Six-speed Ison transmission. Plenty of transmission for what you're going to be doing with this truck. And also you talk about innovation. We invest heavily in innovation when it comes to our vehicles and a lot of it here. You talk about the, the integrated gooseneck hitch, integrated trailer brakes. We've also got the a trailer light assist in the back, which is a great um, feature to have on the truck. Also, when you're backing the truck up, we've got a camera there that will allow you to, to back the truck up right up to the hitch and, and line it up with the ball. So a lot of innovation in this truck. Well, that's great. Now, the Ison transmission, I'm a big fan of that. It's in the heavy-duty Rams. It's in their cabin chassis. And I think Toyota owns half of it. It's in the Hino trucks. It's in all those the big heavy-duty stuff. So that is really interesting that you're putting it in this truck. So we're all getting the hints of heavy-duty, but it's kind of in between. Yeah, exactly. And what we what we realized, um, you know, you've got the light-duty truck with typically around 300-plus pound feet of torque. And then you had the next step up, the, the three-quarter ton heavy-duty. And in our competition, they've really taken it way up there when it comes to the torque, 800 pound-feet of torque, 900 pound-feet of torque. And we realize there's this space in there that no one's really playing in right now. And we saw it as an opportunity to, to meet a need and develop a truck with 555 pound-feet of torque and, and, and meet the need of a customer who doesn't really, they, they need more than what a light duty will offer, but they don't need as much as what these heavy duties are now offering. And, we, and here's something interesting. We had it at the SHOT Show, the, the, the shooting, hunting, and outdoor trade show in Las Vegas back in January. We had one on display there, and we had numerous people come by, look at the truck, and said, that's exactly what we've been waiting for. That's cool. Well, you probably don't have any fuel mileage numbers on it. No, no not, <laughs> not there yet. Still got a little ways to kind of figure some things out. Well, this is going to come out latter part of this year, so we're still fine-tuning some things. Is there a price on the combination of the truck and the trans or that diesel and the transmission? Not yet. Still working on that, too. But it'll, it'll be a definite value and, and competitive. Well, it sets up good. I know you got more weight in that diesel now. Instead of being rack and pinion like the rest of the half tons, now it's for circulating ball. So I know there's some heavy-duty things going on in front suspension. And I guess we'll find out what the back end's like when I hook up my first trader to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll find that it'll have plenty of torque to pull that to, to pull that gooseneck trailer. And that gooseneck hitch is nice, too. You know, we talk about innovation and, and things that Nissan does, and it's nice that you can get that at the factory now. You know, we were the first ones when we came out with the, the first generation Titan, do the spray-in bed liner, utility track system. But here, gooseneck hitch integrated into the truck. You don't have to go, after you buy your truck, you don't have to go somewhere and put it in. That's great. Yeah, I was at the first media launch of the new Titan when it first came out. I mean, it was 2001 or two, but the, uh, the fact that it had the integrated brake, it had the sprayed-in bed liner from the factory, it had all the cargo management in the bed, and it had the electronic stability control, which I think all trucks need when they're empty. You know, they fishtail. Right. And this is a fun. You know, the other Titans are a fun truck to drive. I can imagine. You know, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. Well, there's one other thing I want to mention too. We've got some uh, some storage. You know, we we were also innovative when we had the bedside storage in there, yes. and we've got it now in the actual bed of the truck. Um, where you can get to it, it's waterproof, and it's also removable. So if you, if you want to utilize the full size of the bed, you can remove those, uh, the storage that's in the, in the bed of the truck, or you can leave it in there, and it's lockable and it's waterproof. 
So is that a crossover toolbox, or what does it look like? Yeah, it's a, unfortunately, we don't have one here at the show, but it's, it's, it's nice, and it takes up, and I'll have to show you, but it takes up just a portion of the space uh, right along the side of the truck. Okay, okay. So I've got, Well, those are usually called pork chops. If it's toward the rear end, if it goes out the tailgate, mm -hmm. that's a pork chop toolbox, and those are nice. No, not a pork, chop, a pork chop toolbox, okay. but on the sides there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I remember the door on the side. My dad's 1972 GMC had that, and I yeah. thought that was awesome. That's where we threw our tire chains. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. I still got the good toy mirrors. They look like they're the same. Yep, telescoping touring uh, mirrors. Yep. This is good. It's got a nice um, a puddle lamp under here. So oh, if, yeah. you walk up, if you walk up to the truck and you've got your eye key in your pocket or, or in your purse, whatever it may be, this uh, puddle lamp comes on and illuminates the area for you. Yeah. Well, it looks a lot bigger than the, uh, than the, the Titan was. So it's... <laughs> and let me clarify too for, for, your, for your viewers. This is the Titan XD. Um, so it's, it's got a beefier front end um, and, and you'll notice on the grill up there um, lots of, of room for airflow to come through and keep the engine cool so it's a big beefy rugged bold tough looking truck and that's what we wanted and we looked at our competition and we've got some major players in this segment obviously and we realized you know what we're gonna have to come to market with a, with, with a great truck and this is from stem to stern our guys have gone over every detail of this truck and it is extremely competitive but yeah size it's big it's bold yeah, and the XD will be the first one to come out. Yeah, first one to come okay. out this year. Okay, okay. Well, this five-liter Cummins, you know, it's an interesting engine. And, you know, it, it's it's new to trucks, but it's been in RVs have been had for a couple of years. Some of the Class Cs come in the Class As. So, you know, they know the value of it. They know the value of Cummins. So now you've got some really good name recognition. you got ice in them, and people are understanding what that's all about. You guys are doing this, doing it right, you know. It's, it's very innovative. It's like the first one that came out. I was so tickled with that. Yeah. The things you did with that. Cummins gives us some, some credibility um, in this segment. I mean, you say the name Cummins. There's a lot of brand loyalty there. Oh, there is. Um, and and it's, 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 it, you say Cummins. You say quality. You say a strong engine. Um, it's going to get the job done. And, 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 and this, you know, trucks are, are, is, a, is a tool for a lot of people here in, you know, in, in America. They've got to have something that works, that they can depend on, that's, that's, um, they can count on it to do what they need it to do. And, and with that Cummins engine, you know it's going to deliver. Well, that's true. I live in my truck, and it's like my office. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Steve. Absolutely. This is this is great. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to pulling some trainers. We are too. Buddy. We are. <laughs> Mr. Truck here at the Denver Auto Show for 2015. This is the 2016 Nissan Titan, the new Cummins diesel, that XD, the big truck here. And I'm looking at the inside. It's a very nice interior. It's got some woodwork, some aluminum. Uh, it's similar to what the other trucks are in this class, and I want to show you the integrated brake controller, which is uh, kind of new for this class. There's a few half tons out there with it, and this has that. It's in the dash, an easy place to locate. I can get the manual settings for emergencies where I want to keep the trailer from swaying. I can grab that, and I've got the gain control, which is nice. Four-wheel drive switches are there. Everything's pretty obtainable. It's got some nice knobs on it. You know, I like knobs, and it... Uh, it's a very roomy interior, and this is the crew cab. This you know, feels like a big truck. On this uh, 2016 Titan, this is the, the XD, the heavy-duty one, and this has the factory gooseneck ball, which is a new thing for half tons. Of course, this here, we're not sure what it is. Looks like it's between a half ton and a three-quarter ton, between a class one truck and a class two truck. But it's got a gooseneck ball. I'm not sure what kind. I'm going to say it looks like a Kurt, but I don't know. But this is the kind I like. Instead of having greasy balls, like some of the other brands, where you got to put your hand on the greasy ball to do anything with it, uh, you don't have to take the ball away from the truck. All you just turn it over. And there's a lever here in the, in the uh, fender well. You pull it out, and it locks into place. And now I can go up in the can, into the bed and take the ball out, turn it over, and put it back in the hole, and it's out of the way. I don't have to take that greasy ball into the cab. Let me show you that. And there's a gooseneck ball. I pulled the lever in the fender well, so now I can just take this puppy out, and you see it's got holes, and I can turn it upside down. Now it's back in the truck bed. The floor is nice and flat. They have a cover here. We'll see how that works. It goes over the ball. But here's the tire safety chains, and this is what aftermarket uses. You pull those up, and that's where your safety chains are hooked to. So when you're done with them, you just let them relax. They go into the floor between the ribs on the truck. These one actually is cut out between the ribs on one, because I'm sure this is a prototype. But that way, you got a flat floor. Your ball's not in your cab, somewhere in a baggie. It's where it should be. And you've got, you know, the safety chain 
attachment points are out of the way. I really like the way this is. Now Nissan was the first one to really get into cargo management. They were the first ones back in either 2001 or 2 when the original Titan was introduced. Had sprayed in bed liner from the factory. Had cleats in it. A cargo management so you can hang on to things in the back. And they were the ones that started all that. This is going to be an interesting race in what Nissan does with this truck. On this tailgate it locks. It's got a camera there. It's got the sensors on it for uh, the 360 degree camera which I really like. Looks like it's a class 4 receiver hitch and the light plug is where they've all kind of gone now. They're up here above the fender not down there where you gotta get on your knees to plug in your trader. I like that. This is the SL model. It must be a loaded one. Four wheel drive. Titan XD. The next generation of trucks. I'm on the floor at the Denver Auto Show underneath this XD Nissan Titan. And the frame looks a little bit different than the last one I climbed under. It's a pretty deep boxed frame, reinforced. This part here where the, uh, the flat piece goes up over the axle has all been reinforced. And that's going up to where uh, that gooseneck ball attaches. And it's got the, the hitch, which i got to find out exactly what brand it is. It kind of curves up over that hump to fit to the frame. And looking at these leaf springs, they look like a three inch leaf, which is what Ford's done on their half ton F-150 and is what all the trucks have now on the heavy duties, is a three inch leaf. And I should count the leaves, at least see one, two, three, plus two overloads on the bottom. So it's one, two, three, four, five springs counting the, the one that attaches for the Hotchkiss leaf spring. So that's quite a spring stack back there. Pretty clean underneath here. Everything kind of fits up underneath the frame, so this should be good off-road. And the cross members up front, everything's pretty clean and tucked away. I like the way this is designed all the way through up to the, you know, the wishbone front suspension. And uh, I guess we'll find out how big the brakes are too. There's a lot of details we've got to wait and find out as they release information. But it's uh, it's, it's quite a truck from what I've seen so far. I like the frame. Ladies and gentlemen, let me please introduce the all-new 2016 Toyota Tacoma. Fifty years ago, Toyota introduced our first pickup for the U.S. And since then, we have sold over 7 million trucks. Twenty years ago, the Tacoma was born. The first Toyota truck to be built and designed in America. Since that time, we have sold over 3 million Tacomas. About 75% of those are still on the road today. That's an impressive feat. Led by its legendary quality, durability, and reliability, its go-anywhere capability, it's no wonder that for the past 10 years, Tacoma has dominated the mid-size segment. We created five different grades to match the needs of our active customers. Each grade has its own unique personality and look. These grades include the entry-level SR, perfect for work truck applications, the iconic SR5, a staple in the Toyota truck lineup, the top-of-the-line limited that comes fully loaded, and of course, our most popular models, the rugged TRD Sport and the unstoppable TRD Off-Road. Did you know that over 40% of Tacomas sold today are TRD models, proving that Tacoma owners love to get their trucks dirty. Tacoma TRD Off-Road offers some pretty convenient features. Features like a power outlet that's in the bed of the composite, in the composite bed of the truck. A really nice feature is a GoPro mount. It's located right next to the rear view mirror. How many of us use GoPro cameras and we love to record our entire adventure wherever we may be? Because we want to show our friends later. Well, this GoPro mount is standard in all Tacomas. It also has impressive performance technology. Technology like the multi-terrain select. The ability to select different terrains that you may be on. From loose rock, sand, or mud. Also, like any great off-road adventure, you may encounter some obstacles that would possibly make a lesser truck have to turn around and go home. Not this all new Tacoma. With a new feature called crawl control, you can set the speed of this truck from one to five miles an hour. And then all you have to do is focus on the steering. The truck is going to do the rest for you. 
you're going to be able to overcome those obstacles. And with the GoPro camera mount and your GoPro in the vehicle, you're going to record that. You'll show it to your friends later, and they will all know that you are a pro at off-road driving. When the 2016 Tacoma launches later this fall, it will again raise the benchmark for the mid-size pickup segment. Behind each Tacoma is a great North American story. The Tacoma is designed and engineered in Michigan, tested and tuned at our proving grounds in, in Arizona, manufactured at our plant in San Antonio. A lot of times fog lights just shine light straight forward. We've got these new multi-angle lens fog lights, so they're going to project light in a broader view. So you're going to see more of what you don't see if you happen to be on a dark country road or if you happen to be going up in the mountains. You know, sometimes we worry about those little furry animals that like to run across the road. We don't see them on the side, so these fog lights will absolutely help us see more of the side of, uh, on the side of the road. We'll take a quick walk over here. Let's take a look at the side profile of this vehicle. See, you definitely can tell that it is a Tacoma when you look at the side profile. This is our access cap version of the Tacoma. We do have a double cap version you see up there on the screen behind me. The double cab version, of course, is a four-door, which enables you to carry a few more people. This one is absolutely fantastic to be able to haul whatever you need to haul. You get comfort and convenience for your, your people riding in the cab there. But you can see a lot of the aggressive styling going across the side of this vehicle as well. You've got some uh, bends in the sheet metal that make it just look for uh, athletic as well. We also have a couple of different bed configurations when it comes to the Tacoma. So we have a long bed version as we also have a short bed version. Typically you see the short bed on the double cab and you'll see a longer bed on the access cab. Well also for the new 2016 Tacoma we offer a long bed on the double cab as well as a TRD off-road package on it. So for those that really want to go off into the mountains or do the things that we like to do here in Colorado. You've got a bigger bed to be able to throw more stuff in, or put your motorcycle in, and be able to close the tailgate without any problems whatsoever. Speaking of tailgate, I do want to have you come around to the back end of this, because there's a lot of new technology in the tailgate and the back end of this vehicle as well. Some of the really nice features that we have on, this, uh, on the back end of the vehicle, we do have the parking sensors now. It does have a backup camera as well. But too often do we see those vehicles that have a backup camera and they still have dents in the back end because they missed whatever it is that they were trying to miss. So we've got backup camera and we've got parking sensors to help when you have to back up. The other thing is, this is a really nice feature for uh, tailgates. So when you notice the tailgate coming down, you notice it didn't come slamming down. How many of us remember the trucks of old where you'd let the tailgate down and it would come slamming down? And if anybody was standing underneath there, it'd be four inches shorter. So we've got the assist now with the tailgate going up or going down, so it's not going to come slamming down. You can also see, if you kind of come around this side, you can see the power outlet that I explained earlier in the composite bed of this truck. So this bed also has its already built-in bed liner, so you're not having to worry about scratching the paint of a brand new, beautiful truck. The other thing I want to showcase here on this tailgate is it does have an integrated spoiler. In this day and age, we all care about fuel economy. So when you make things a little more aerodynamic, like this rear integrated spoiler, it helps the truck be a little more aerodynamic, which should in fact help it be a little more fuel efficient as well. The other nice thing is we do have the trailer plug now that is up above where we used to have them down below. If anybody's towed a trailer, sometimes those get a little muddy, full of crud, or if you happen to back over a rock, you knock them off. So this way it's uh, up, out of the way, and a lot more accessible. So I wanted to take a minute to show you the beautiful Ram Rebel behind me, and then the, um, the my personal favorite, the Ram Limited, um, that's over there to your left. And for that, for your personal walk around, uh, we brought Carl Lally, who is the uh, senior manager for the Ram Truck brand, um, to give you a little more detail on these two new versions of the Ram Truck. So here you go, here's Carl. Thank you much. Actually, I'm going to use this one. That's right. Well, good afternoon, and thanks again for being with us. Hopefully, we give you just enough sugar to get your energy up here for the next like 10 minutes or so while I'm talking, and then you can crash, you know, after that. Or maybe that's what the coffee's for, right? Like Wendy said, you know, it has been a great run for our company in the last five years, and Ram parallels that in a big way. 
She mentioned 60 months of consecutive year-over-year -year growth for Fiat Chrysler. Ram's actually at 59 months, so we're trailing the parent company by just a month. But in that 59-month time frame, we've also doubled our market share within the large pickup segment. So it's been growth not only on the recovery of the market, but on us getting share from our competition. And the way we've done that largely, as you've kindly recognized, is through product innovation. Uh, again, the uh, Rocky Mountain Auto Press uh, Truck of the Year Award means a lot to us because it's recognition by the marketplace that we're doing things that are innovative, that are different, and that people respect. And while it might be easy after 59 consecutive months of growth to take a step back and say, okay, we're going to catch our breath here a little bit and kind of let our, uh, you know, progress on product speak for itself, that's just not the way we're cut out here at the Ram Brand. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is the way that we're going to continue to keep the conversation going on our brand here this year, and I think it'll even lead into next year to an extent. As Wendy mentioned, this is our newest baby, the Ram 1500 Rebel. Now we rolled this out at the uh, North American International Auto Show in Detroit back in January. Some of you may have had a chance to see it. However, I'm really excited to have it here in Denver because I think this is going to be a product that's going to be an absolute home run in this particular market. You know, Ram is actually the fastest growing truck brand across the country. We're also the fastest growing truck brand in the state of Colorado. Uh, we have a lot of great success in this particular region. We're the number one selling diesel truck maker, for example, in the state of Colorado. We have been for over four years now. And I think as we bring products to market like this, it's going to continue to build on that momentum that we've established. The first thing you notice when you see this Rebel, without question, is going to be the front end. And that's generated quite a bit of conversation because it is a departure from our traditional crosshair front end of the truck. What we were looking at when we designed this truck were the customers that you may know yourselves, or maybe even the dealers that you know yourselves. In other words, have you ever been to a dealership and seen a brand new truck sitting on the lot with a lift kit, maybe some off-road tires, some off-road accessories, um, unique wheels, sometimes the badging's been changed on the truck, or maybe you have a friend that goes out and buys a brand new truck and the first thing they do is they go get it lifted, change out the wheels and tires, make their own version of the truck that they just spent a pretty good buck on. We recognize that that need is there in the marketplace, so at Ram Brand we wanted to be able to meet that need for those customers straight from the factory, the truck they don't have to lift a finger for, yet we'll give them that customized look, feature and benefit to it. So the unique front end is a start in that particular progress. Obviously, we got the silver RAM, or RAM letters there, front, loud and proud. And you'll notice this dark theme kind of continues all the way down into this unique powder-coated front bumper. We got a unique uh, fog lamp on the front of this truck as well. And then we carry this black tone out throughout the side of the vehicle. First on the fender flares, which you might recognize from Rebel's big brother, the Power Wagon. And then obviously, even this unique 17-inch uh, wheel that's got these black painted pockets on it. And without doubt, one thing you can't overlook is the unique tire that we put on this vehicle. This is a 33-inch Toyo all-terrain tire. Obviously a very aggressive tread pattern so that this truck, whether it's slush, snow, you guys might be familiar with that a little bit in this part of the country, or mud, dry trails, whatever you have and anything in between, it's going to be equipped to be able to handle that type of terrain. And then we extended the black treatment all the way around the side of the truck and the rear as well to really give it that trail-ready presence that this truck was designed to be able to get off the road a bit. Now one of the unique features about the Ram Rebel that you're also probably paying attention to is the fact that this truck sits higher than your traditional Ram 1500. Part of the reason for that is because we actually incorporated our four-corner active air suspension as standard equipment on this truck. What that allowed us to do is actually raise the ride height an inch above what you'd see on a traditional Ram 1500 truck. And what that means for the customer is that not only <clears throat> Do they get the peace of mind knowing that their truck has been raised and lifted by our factory engineer so that it's designed and it's manufactured to operate within all the components underneath the suspension here and the drivetrain without any fear of not having something fitting together or working harmoniously? But with the combination of the increased ride height and the 33 inch tire, we have a best in class 15 inches of ground clearance on this truck. Under the Ram 1500 Rebels, uh, hood, you're going to find one of two uh, engine options, our 3.6 liter Pentastar engine or our legendary 5.7 liter Hemi, putting out 395 horsepower and 410 feet of torque. 
As I mentioned, at the rear of the vehicle, you're also going to notice a design cue that's a little bit different from Ram trucks of the past. We've stamped into the back uh, tailgate of this truck the RAM letters in matte black finish. So loud and proud, whether you see this truck from the front or from behind, there's no mistaking, this is a unique truck. And not only did we do that on the exterior, but we took that treatment to the interior. And if you haven't had a chance yet to get inside of one of, this, um, one of these Rebel trucks and get a chance to take a look at the interior, I encourage you to do so later on today. The first thing you're going to notice, of course, is the radar red accents, trimming the seat, the instrument panel, the door panels. It's uh, really kind of speaks to the uniqueness that we want this customer to appreciate in this truck. And if you're paying attention and you notice that aggressive tire tread pattern that I pointed out in the Toyo tire here, you're going to see that same tread pattern embossed into the seat back and the seat cushion. So it carries that Rebel theme from the exterior truck and ties nicely into the interior of the truck. We also upgraded the center console on the truck. We got a new bin there that will hold a smartphone or a tablet in place securely. So when you hit that rocky trail, you don't have to worry about your phone flying across the truck, which we know sometimes is our most precious asset on the inside of the truck. And then we took the finish right down to your feet. We actually put a rubber floor mat in here that has that radar red ram's head badge right into it. So whether you're looking for a unique custom truck, uh, from front to rear, head to toe, we've got it covered here in the Ram 1500 Rebel. We're very excited about this truck. It's going to be going on uh, into production here at the end of the second quarter, so about 60 days from now. And then, of course, it's going to start uh, arriving on dealerships shortly thereafter. And one of the interesting things when we discovered when we were looking at this truck and putting together the plan for it is not only is that customer unique who wants a straight from the factory customized truck, but there's also another customer set that we really spent some time looking at, and that was the premium truck customer. So on the Laramie Limited, which you see redesigned here next to me, again, we started with the front of the truck and gave it an all new front end, a departure from our classic crosshair grill. You got a ram stamped right into the front of this particular truck's grill with some chrome billets going horizontally on either side of it, giving it a unique appearance. Well, there you can get with this chrome bumper or a body color bumper, and you can see that the unique appearance we didn't limit just to the front of the truck, we extended it all the way down the side. See the uh, door spear here from the limited terms actually stamped right into it, the standard wheel to wheel side steps. And you're going to find chrome pieces that are really dressing this truck out the top and bottom. Whether it's the mirror caps, the door handles, the trim underneath the window here, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't point out what I think is one of the most attractive features, and that's the unique 20 inch wheel on this truck. This is what we call a multi faceted aluminum wheel. You can see the intricate features, uh, different surfaces and dimensions that are on the wheel. It's a combination of polished aluminum and painted silver. That's what gives it that unique appearance to it that really allows it to pop. And again, on the inside of this truck, we took it to a new level. The interior of the Laramie Limited is bathed in all black leather, not only on the seats, front and rear, but even on the door trim panels, across the dash. We took the uh, headliner of this truck, we put a dark headliner in it, really kind of completed that black tie effect, if you will, on the interior of the truck. What you're also going to find in here, too, is an upgraded center console as well. Similar to the Rebel, it has that place to hold your smartphone in place or your tablet. It's also got a nice camber door that shuts heated steering wheel, so you appreciate the ventilated seats as much as the heated seats. Nothing more satisfying when it's below 40 degrees and you hit your remote start, and your heated seats has been started, your heated steering wheel has been started, you get right into the truck, it's ready to go, cozy and comfy for you. Um, we not only took that customized premium feel to the seats and the interior, we even extended it onto the dashboard itself. You'll see the gauges in this truck. They're Inspired by a high-end watch, it's what we call a liquid chrome treatment on the surrounds and the gauges themselves. The TFT cluster, the center, that information center, it actually has a backdrop that matches the limited badging and theme that you see throughout the truck. You'll see that on the radio screen as well. So everything, every potential touch point on this truck is customized. Even the floor mats. You'll see a nice Berber carpet there on the mat, which is obviously a high-end piece of material, but it's snapped in there so that, hey, let's face it, it is a truck. People are going to use it for truck stuff and get dirty. In those scenarios, you can snap the Berber carpet right out, and you got a slush mat, basically, that's right there ready to capture all of it. Thanks, and if you have any questions, I'll go ahead and take them. What's the uh, ground clearance on this one? 
So, great question. Wendy told me to ask that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this does come standard with our active four corner air suspension because that premium customer is looking for that which lets you lower it two inches for easier ingress and egress. I don't know off the top of my head what the this standard ground clearance is. This is 15 you said. That is 15. This one's going to, it's got a lower profile tire. Okay. It's not going to sit as high in that air setting. So you're probably at least three or four inches less than what you're going to see in a rubber. 12, 13 class? At most probably. Probably around 11 or so. Okay. Yes. Anticipated pricing. So we will roll that out um, as we get closer to launching it, but you're going to be at $50,000 plus. It is on a crew cab model only, 4x2 and 4x4, um, but $50,000 plus is the price range that you're going to be looking at for a truck like this. Rebel, we have not announced pricing on that. <coughs> what cabs are available on the Rebel? Tell you, but then you <laughs> The Rebel you'll be able to get in a uh, crew cab and a quad cab. And to get the suspension lift, you guys basically just set the air suspension to a higher default? Is that yeah. what it is? That's right. So on a standard Ram 1500 with the active four corner air suspension, you've got the standard setting that the truck sits in, then you have two off-road settings that you can raise it to. Off-road one, which is about an inch, off-road two, which is another inch or so above and beyond that. The Rebel essentially is designed to live in that off-road one position. Um, it will still lower if you want to hit that exit and enter mode to make it lower to the ground to get in and out. Um, it'll still lower at highway speeds for better aerodynamics like it does in any other Ram 1500 truck. But then it will standard height and revert back to what we would call off-road one in a truck. Can you adjust Does that, that then up as, up as well? Can you adjust this? You will be able to take it up uh, another inch for maximum okay. ground clearance and off-road usage, yeah. Are you building them at Warren Truck? We are building them at Warren Truck Assembly Plant in Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Does that affect anything in terms of its towing, towing capacity? Um, and what is its towing capacity if you know? Yeah, so um, the air suspension does not have any sort of negative impact on the towing capability of the truck. It's still designed to incorporate that. In fact, it'll sense when you have a load in the back of the truck and actually level it out. So in many respects, okay. it's actually more conducive to towing because you don't have to worry about squat in the back of your truck where you drop a load in there and you see it sink down, it'll actually level that off and make for a more, uh, you know, more natural towing experience. Um, on these trucks specifically, I don't have, but uh, we would have that in the press guide, I believe. So if you need those stats, you should be able to get that. Do you, do you have an expected take rate for each of these models? So take rate, we're probably uh, looking in the 5 to 10% range on each one of them. Uh, they are unique customer niches that we're seeing here. What often happens though is you get a customer that finds this truck appealing, they come in and check it out, maybe they hadn't experienced a Bighorn model truck before, they don't realize the ride quality that we designed into our truck. So oftentimes we find folks coming in on one of these trucks and driving out with something different. We're okay with that. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to get crazy and think that 100% of the people are going to need a truck that customized. We think it fits a specific segment of the market. When, when is the, uh, when did you go on set? Uh, it'll go into production in uh, June, so in about 60 days or so, late Q2. Start hitting dealership lots, call it July, and then we would anticipate hitting the road shortly after that. Is the Rebel an off-road truck like the Power Wagon? So the Rebel is not going to have the same level of off-road capability as the Power Wagon. The Power Wagon is really the ultimate in terms of being able to climb up the side of a mountain type of capability. However, obviously it does have some off-road uh, capability in it. It's got the increased ride height, it does have Bilstein shocks, you can get it with a 392 rear axle ratio. So certainly it's got off-road capability, but it's not going to have uh, the same type of suspension set up that you're going to find on a power line. Right. How does the rebound rate on those air shocks? Is it similar to what a gas shock would be in the double reservoirs, or is it slower or faster? You know, I couldn't answer that question. 